Happy Monday, everybody. Happy April Fool's Day as well. Welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. And also, happy birthday to my TV husband. Thank you. Yay, have you had oh, such a great day? It has been such a great day. You guys all here at Channel 2 uh, decorated my desk, and it's always fun to come to work. I walked into the meeting late because there was an accident on the freeway <laughs> they no, shut it the down late is good on your birthday because you're like I, something there right no i'm just kidding i was like fashionably late everybody's saying no it's been such a great day it has been and i love april fool's day because anyone who knows me knows that i am a total prankster and I love a good prank. I know you do. You do. You always get everybody, including me. But we don't have any pranks for you today. We just have celebrations. HR will be grateful for this. I know. By the way, you know how many times HR has come running down, <laughs> like Maria from her office from comes running down, because we've scared someone and they scream bloody murder? Yeah. It's just like a fake snake just or a, a fake thing. tarantula. But, um, you know, we're going to get this party started right. We have, we have a little surprise for you. <laughs> okay. Come on out. Day to you, happy birthday. Oh! <laughs> Wait a minute. That was fake. That was a prank, right? Carlos, are you okay? <laughs> Guys, that was definitely a prank, right? Smashing your birthday cake? I think I so. Was that oh, a... I don't know. That had to have been a prank. <laughs> I don't know. They're checking behind the scenes. Do you want to just take a bite of it, or I mean, what's maybe, in the cake? I don't know. It's just a cake. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> don't trip, cat. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh! Happy Thank birthday, you, guys. dear Derek. Cat, sing it to my mic. I can't. You need to tie your shoe. You need to tie your Carlos, shoe. Carlos, are you okay? That was a rough fall. <laughs> you did a, we got to replay know. that in slow motion. You face planted. It was so good. <laughs> Look oh, at your cute cake. This is such a great cake. My goodness. Isn't Wait a minute. Where Where is this from, Kat? Did you make this? I did. I made it in my kitchen this morning. <laughs> Hang um, on. The graphics department helped. They, um, you know, printed out your face and bitmoji. You I made this cake in your kitchen? In my kitchen. You really did make it? No, oh. no, no. It's from the Cakery Boutique. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, I know you're talented. The Cakery Boutique? Like Cakery Boutique. Oh yeah, gosh, they did our 70th you. anniversary. Yeah, they did. Our, um, uh -huh. For Houston, uh, for KPRC. Yeah, 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 they did. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is an. We awesome hope you enjoy cake. your real cake. You I know. On the floor. And your real <laughs> gift. So we already saw yeah. the picture. They, the staff is waiting because they want you to open this on yeah. air. Oh my gosh. Do you want to hold that, Kat? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, we're gonna, I've got. It's got frosting all over it. <laughs> How do I well, open this? Just take this off. Honestly, this is a little ribbon. <laughs> that cake, Carlos, the face plant. <laughs> I'm so worried about you. <laughs> Are you bruised? Oh, uh, you guys have made me feel so special. And not just you guys here at Channel 2, but honestly, all the viewers, I kind of had a... No, they just, they all, like, wanted me to tell you that they really know that you're going to enjoy this. And they saw it and thought you should have it. This is another prank, right? Oh, my gosh. Just open the gift. Is it going to, like, <laughs> explode in my face? No. We're done pranking. Done pranking? Yeah. yeah. You guys. I'm a it's little a bit group nervous. gift, so it's always really good. You guys are so nice. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys watch Houston Life, you will know what this is. It is Jean panties. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look at the front. That's it's very <laughs> slim. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a perfect fit. Later, we're going to have a try on sesh. <laughs> it's a perfect wow. size. I don't know who picked out his size, but it's so I perfect. Mean, I really, I don't know what to say. <laughs> How about thank you? Oh, thank you guys so much. This is the gift that's going to keep giving day after day. I can't. Year after year. I cannot wait to wear these to work tomorrow. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm just really so moved. Thank you, guys. Wow. Listen, I, I mean, honestly, I was having 
sort of this moment of reflection last night. Three years ago right now, that was April of 2016. Yeah. And Houston was not even a fertilized egg at that point. You know, it wasn't even a thought in my right. mind. I had been here a handful of times for work over the last couple decades. I never thought Houston would be home, and I can't believe now, three years later, I just feel like I have all these deep roots here. I feel like you guys are my family, and honestly, I, I can't imagine life without you guys, so thank you so much. Aww. And to all of the viewers, you guys make me feel just so welcome and so at home. I, I truly have never felt so at home in a city, so anyway, thank you. Oh my gosh, happy birthday, thank my you. love. Um, and to keep this going, no more pranks. <laughs> we do have a special message for you. This was a prank? No, no, that's your fashion statement. But, um, so I, I want to read a little something for you. I hope I can get through it. Okay, okay. so there is this boy. He kind of stole my heart. He calls me mom. Derek was born singing. We Aww. spent the first five months of his life crying. Him in pain and me in sympathy. Oh, call it. I had call it. <laughs> he did develop quite good lung capacity. He was a delightful baby and an amazing, curious youth and child. He was fascinated by everything and reported back to me on his discoveries, as he still does today. I ad-libbed that little last part. <laughs> I also have loved watching my child grow from baby to man with all of his talents, compliments, awards, and trophies. I was almost most happy to hear from people that he is kind. He was my best April Fool's joke ever. I always told people I was carrying another little girl and would <laughs> pat him and say, I know you're my little boy. <laughs> Derek, I love you and am keeping you forever. That's Aww. your Bobby Sharon Shore, right? That's how That's CS, my mom. right? Bobby Sharon Nichols Shore. That yes. is so sweet. Thank you, Mom. And I know she's watching right now. She is. She does every day. And um, we have one more message, but this one I don't have to read, so take a look. All right. Hi, Derek. Happy birthday. I can't wait to celebrate with you this evening. You are the reason I wake up every day with a giant smile on my face, and you are also the reason that everyone else around you is always smiling. You're also the biggest prankster I know, which makes perfect sense because you were born on April Fool's Day. Um, everyone just truly enjoys being in your company, and I'm so happy that um, you're in my life. I love you so much. Also, Jenny Scamardo, my cameraman, <laughs> wants to say happy birthday as well. We love you. I'll see you tonight. Aww. Yay! That's so sweet. So we pranked you and surprised you, because that's usually that's usually your seat. Th that's true. That's true. I deserved it. And um, seriously, thank you guys so much. And I did learn that when you're pranking someone, you never want to prank someone and then like let them down. So you never want to say like, hey, you, you know, you're getting a raise. We're going to pay you a million dollars a year. <laughs> and then you imagine how great that's going to be. Just kidding. Take you're it still away. making nothing. Right. So, but it is good to like fall with the cake and then bring the real cake. So always like, you know, surprise people pleasantly instead of letting them down. That's a good them. one. And Don't you think? What's one of your favorite pranks that you've done? Can oh. I, do you know? Oh my gosh. Okay. So actually Seth, um, who is one of my best friends and is a reporter for CBS News. Seth was away covering the Iraq war for like six weeks. He hadn't been home. And my friend Noel and I, we busted into his apartment while he was away <laughs> and we put <laughs> mouth straps everywhere. And we faked a note from this like crackhead landlord. Oh, Sorry, is that rude to say? No. The landlord was like, yeah, you know. Yeah, not if it's true. Doing some shady dealings on the side. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Hate mail, bring it on. Yeah. And uh, and we essentially said, like, you know, dear Seth, there's this rodent problem in the building, and you're going to... Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, when when the when the traps are full, just call the maintenance man, Ernesto, and he'll put more peanut butter and cheese in the traps. Oh, my gosh. And Seth, like, had a meltdown, lost his mind. Oh, totally that's Totally bought great. the whole thing. I love it. That was one of many pranks, though. It's, it's hard to choose, because... And I will say, a fake spider or a fake snake goes a long way. Tie a little piece of dental floss to it, you know, pull it down, pull it across someone's desk at the office. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The boys today, um, their class at school was, um, they came in this morning and their chairs were all hanging from the ceiling and they got TP'd, their classroom got TP'd. Oh, yeah? So apparently there was some, you know, some stuff going on there. But, you know, my brothers, I have two older brothers, and they were so evil to me growing up. Like, you know, at one point they put me in the dryer. It was really, it was awful. In the dryer? Yeah, it was tiny. It was really, like, they didn't close the door, but it was like, we have this great hide so and seek. dangerous. Rest. I know, I shouldn't have even said that. But um, <laughs> I also grew up in a time place. when we didn't wear seatbelts, so there you go. Um, but, no, they would um, put cups of water 
on the top of my door. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like they would, you know, mess with me, whatever, and I would get mad because what, do what does a young girl do? You know, she storm storms up to her room and, and I busted open the door and all this cups of water came on top of me. Another thing they did, a lot of time and effort into this, they took my door off the hinge <laughs> and turned it upside down so like the door handle was lower and closed the door and they, I got mad about something and I ran up the stairs. You know, like you go to open a locked door yeah. And you crack yourself in the head. That's exactly that what prank took to a lot of effort. I know they were evil. You know what a really good one is too. If you have one of those refrigerators, I used to do this to my sister Liz all the time. If you have one of the refrigerators that dispenses water out of the door, yeah, you can take a little drinking straw, cut it so that it's like about an inch long, and then notch it in the middle so you create like a little elbow and tape it and then shove it up on the little like water connector so when someone goes to get water it, it shoots at you at them oh instead my of into the cup that is a really good one that's a good one or if you have kids for an after school snack go get some oreos and take out the center and, and put, put toothpaste ew or mayonnaise oh i hate Oh my mayonnaise gosh. Mayonnaise would totally, I would throw up that. <laughs> mayonnaise would be nasty. That would be so bad. <laughs> uh, so bad. Okay, well, celebrations are just beginning. I can't wait to see the try on sash. Okay, oh. still to come <laughs> on today's show, the birthday fun will continue with our friend Robbie Schultz. He's mixing up custom cocktails that are great for your next birthday celebration. And I hear there's a Derek drink coming your way. Oh, it's going to be strong, I hope. Plus, what better way to celebrate a birthday than with puppies? Chew on this, not on that. Puppy expert Stephanie Bennett is in the house. House. She has five tips to help us better handle the biting phase. Yes. All puppies go through it. Don't worry. Okay, but first, we are just five days away from the Astros' home opener back in town. We wanted to kick off this week in a unique way. Yeah, we did. Our producers here at Houston Life work very hard behind the scenes. They are always making us laugh. And if you follow us on Instagram, you've probably seen two of them lately, Kat and Carlos. They've been doing the celery juice challenge. Mmm, delicious. Gets right through, yes. <laughs> Sure does. <laughs> so today on April Fool's Day, we decided to send them out to hit the streets to see if they can fool you with some of their Astros antics. I'm Kat, he's Carlos. Derek and Corny have sent us out to test how much Houston knows about our Astros. And if they can catch our curveballs. Let's go. My fire is playing. My, my fire is playing. Since you're a fan, you know the, the regular Astros logo. Um, did you hear that they were changing that? They announced that this morning? Oh, no, I didn't hear that. Okay, let me just show you. Um, it's this one right over here. Green, yellow, I mean, a little different, but how do you feel about it? It's something different, a little more Mardi Gras theme or, or something, you know. Is it permanent or is it just for an uh, opening day? Oh, uh, it actually is going to be permanent. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, it's definitely a total transition from the orange and, and blue, so. Yeah. Well, there's a new logo coming out. Do you want us to give us some input on that? I like logo, you know. What do you think of their new logo? I think it's great logo. Go Astros, Astros. What do you think about this? I like it, yeah. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? The purple, the blue. I agree, yeah, and I like the, the text. You know, the font is a little different, changed up. It's, it's, it's very nice. This year, they're thinking about bringing some new players on the team. Derek Shore, he's an upcoming player from UCLA. What are your thoughts on him? Oh, gosh, I know nothing about him, but I like the name. My fire is playing. My fire is playing. It's almost like a Mardi Gras theme, I feel like, but what are your thoughts on it? I don't know that I'm a big fan of it. I'm, I'm that orange and blue is what I know and what I love. I, this would take a while for me to get used to. And a lot of scouts have been looking at this new player that's coming along, Derek Shore. What are your thoughts on him and joining the team this year? Who's this? Derek Shore, he's one of the pitchers. Uh, I'm not familiar with him. Derek? Derek Shore. Shore. Okay. Yeah, I promise you he's going to be a big name. Give it one season, all right? The new player, Derek Shore, is coming along. He uh, just got the new $70 million contract. Uh, yeah, what do you think about him? Uh, honestly, I, I'm yet to see, but I, I think it should be some uh, good addition to the team. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. That's it. Yeah, they're not. So we're actually just doing a little, uh, we're doing a little prank I'm on you guys. Who are the true fans. Yay. Oh, okay. Yay. We I are. feel we, so much we, better uh, now. How big of an Astros fan are you? No, don't walk away from me, Layla. <laughs> I mean, and there you have it. Houston is way too nice, people. $70 million contract. I mean, if I don't come to work tomorrow, you'll know why, my dear. I have no idea. <laughs>
signed on the dotted line. <laughs> Great job, Kat and Carlos. Wow, that was really fun. We should do that more often. Totally yeah, cute. Get out there. All right, so still ahead on Houston Life, one of you watching right now is about to get $500 in Stroh's swag. We will be announcing the winner of our Astros gear giveaway in 60 seconds. Plus, get ready to flex your funny bone. We're heading out to the Station Theater for some tips on incorporating comedy into your everyday life. Find your inner comedian. All right. All right, as promised, it is time to announce the winner of our Astros gear giveaway. Drum roll. I need some drums, I guess. I know. Congratulations to our Houston Life viewer, Maria Garcia. Maria, you have just won $500 in Astros swag, just in time for baseball season. Right. We hope you enjoy getting into the Stros spirit and go Stros. We'll be right back. So today may be April Fool's Day, but here at Houston Life, we believe the fun should last the entire year round. 100%. Lauren Kelly is out at Station Theater right now to get a taste of some improv basics. Hey, Lauren, happy April Fool's Day. Hey, guys. I am not exactly funny when it comes to improv, so I took it to the professionals here at Station Theater for downtown. Let me tell you a little bit about this place. They offer six shows a week. It's also BYOB, so if that doesn't get you in, you can come, it's only $10 for admission, all ages, guys, girls, and 16, 17 year olds, this place is for you. I'm here with Roger, and I'm here with Jessica, they're the directors here. Hi. Thank welcome. You for coming. Yeah, welcome. Sure, welcome. Yeah, thank you for so much for coming. Tell us a little bit about Station Theater. Okay, so Station been around for about six uh, years. Uh, we're downtown, and we do long form improv, which means that you and a partner just make up a scene on the spot, line by line. It's uh, it's hardcore collaboration. It is super fun. We have classes that are good for aspiring comedians or just people looking to have fun. Yeah. Well, I'm looking to have fun, that's yeah. for sure. All right, so Jessica, you've got adult field trips too? We do, in fact, we do corporate training and team building for lots of different companies. We've worked with ExxonMobil, we've worked with United Airlines, Houston Rockets, um, and we can come to them or they can come to us and we use uh, improv team building. In fact, you wanna play one of the games that we do? <gasps> can yeah. I, can let's I play a game? Yeah, let's right. do it right now. Stephanie and Nicole are also here with us too. All right. Yeah, All right. okay. Let's um, do it. So, Roger, uh, tell me five ways that you can use a shoelace that have nothing to do with shoes. Uh, you can strangle yourself. Yes. You can eat it with some gravy. Yes. You can throw it off the building. Yes. You can name it, and you can uh, it can be your mom. Yes. And you can <laughs> mail it to a friend. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Wow. Good job. That's amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, All I mean, right. that's what happens whenever you turn off your brain and try you to let try? things go. You want to try? Yeah, let's let you try. You want to try one? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. uh... Uh, name me five people you do not want to interview for Houston Live. Uh, uh, and we are out of time. Oh, what? that's such a shame. Oh, Thank that. you guys so much. The Station Theater, you got to get on down here. And I do believe that we have one more question. We're going to play a five games, uh, sure. five questions, five things with Derek, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. So I get to ask? Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. Awesome. Uh, so my question is, Derek, what are five products that you use in your hair? Mm. Uh, <laughs> Wait, I missed the I question. To know. I, really I couldn't do. hear it. Yeah. I couldn't hear it. Definitely. It's what are the five things, what are five things Derek uses in his hair? Can oh. you even limit them to five oh. things? Oh. Even I bet it's more. No, it's actually you, could you even hard to believe, but I, 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 I woke mean, up I'd like this. I mean, I'd be interested in the routine. The it's just time. a simple, simple like uh, dab of paste. Yeah. That's all. Oh, uh, Lauren, that looks like so much fun. here. <laughs> a little wax, wax on, wax off. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Derek and Courtney, back great to you job. guys. That looks like a lot of fun. You know, improv is such great training, too. It is. Right? Everything. So we should go take a class sometime. I would love that. They're a great group down there, for We're sure. Coming job. up, are, are finances causing you to bump heads with your significant other? After the break, we are take, uh, talking to the financial expert about what you need to know when it comes to relationships and money. Whether you are a newlywed or have been married for decades, studies show about a third of all couples, even the happiest ones, can clash over their finances at least once per month. Well, joining us to help us avoid those money woes, private wealth advisor with the Merit Price Financial, Trevor Shakiba. There's always an interesting combination. Couples, finance, whether you're about to be married, it's one of those conversations you need to have sooner than later. Yeah, and this is, a, I think, an important segment because you always read the studies that finances are number one or number two that cause constant 
communication in a relationship. So my first point is really, you gotta get on the same page, right? right? You gotta start there. Expectations are really a key, I think, in life, but certainly when it comes to finances. Remember, it's not a competition. So this is more of team and, and, and teamwork. So, and I think my final point on this one is, is just compromise. Um, that goes a long, long way when it comes to finances and in your relationship. One thing that can cause some issues in a relationship is debt. And what's your advice for handling debt? Because maybe some people come together and one has debt and the other one doesn't. Yeah, so that goes back to my, my first point here. Make sure you're on the same team. You gotta handle it together, in my opinion. So I think it's a mistake if you say, hey, you brought this to the relationship. Right. You're on your own and take care of it. Huh. I think really putting that plan together and remember, support and encouragement go a long way if you're on the same team. Absolutely, and I, this is also, I mean, again, talking about a budget, we always, you always start with a budget, but you also have to track the spending as a couple. Yeah, so I actually almost put this as budgeting, but I wanted to change it up a little bit and say track your spending, but it's basically a budget like you mentioned there. Look, um, if you don't know where your money's going, it's gonna be very difficult to achieve any of those financial objectives, whether that's paying off debt or saving X amount of dollars to get to retirement. I always talk about this. A lot of people know how much money they're bringing in, but they just don't have any idea of where What's it's going. going. Yeah. So that's why you've got to track it and you've got to have that budget in place. Well, it also seems reasonable, Trevor, that if you're gonna handle debt together, you should talk about spending together because let's say some someone is like spending out of control in the relationship. It's not fair to like stick the other person in the relationship with the bill, with the bill right? Yeah, no, you've gotta, you've gotta come together here and have a plan. Um, and that kind of goes to my next point is, how should you tackle that? Should you have just a joint account, all your money pulls in together? Should you have maybe a separate account and a joint account? Um, and I can tell you this, find, first, just find what works for, for you, right? Um, I find in dealing with clients and in my own personal relationship with Christina, we have a separate account each and a joint account and once we uh, you know, save the, the money that we're supposed to be saving and pay the bills, then you spend it on whatever you want. Christina thinks about spending very differently than, than I do, but as long as we achieve what our plan is, then you know, the packages that seem to appear on the front door uh, all the time, uh, Those that's are okay. Gifts. What Those are gifts, Trevor. <laughs> They're there gifts. By mistake. You know, and I do that too because on that joint account, for, for gift giving reasons, I don't want him to know everything that I'm buying you know, a birthday present. Oh, or, yeah. Not that I'm buying for me. I'm saying, like, when I want to surprise him, he's going to be, you know, the alerts go or whatever. Right. So um, the other thing is don't keep financial secrets. And I think as a couple, you should have that sort of, like, conversation of when to have that conversation. What's your dollar amount that you need to be like, hey, I'm looking at something and I'm thinking about spending X, Y, and Z. Like, what's your what's your limit? That's kind of how we operate. Like, we have a dollar amount that if we're going over it, yeah. we got to have a conversation. Oh. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the expectations, right? But on, on this point, start from the, the beginning. For all the viewers that are, you know, maybe starting to think about marriage or, or in that type of relationship, bring everything to the table from the, from the beginning. You don't want to have surprises related to credit card debt, student loans. Look, things are, gonna, are not gonna go perfectly, so right. you may make a mistake or you may make that impulse buy. Disclose as soon as you can so it's not a big surprise down the line. No secrets, no financial secrets. You also say, just like any other issue in the relationship, you should schedule these little chats, like monthly, quarterly, sit down and talk about money. Yes, something, so communication. Right? You just got to have good communication in a relationship. And so if you talk about it quarterly, Christine and I usually have a, a, a brief conversation every Sunday evening. That might be too frequent for some folks, but track your goals. And my final point here is celebrate the wins. So when you pay off a credit card, you build up your cash reserve or you get your 401k to, you know, 500,000 or whatever that goal is, go out, celebrate. Financial planning can be fun. I love it. <laughs> All right. How many pairs of shoes did you buy this weekend? How many bags did you buy this weekend? I can imagine what the chats at Courtney's house uh, oh, so go nice. down like. If you would like more info on financial planning, I'm just kidding. Or if you'd like to schedule a complimentary initial consultation with Trevor and the Shakiba Group, call 281-724-9917, or you can visit them online at theshakibagroup.com. Always great to see you. Great Thanks. information, Trevor. Thanks so much. After the break, the puppy expert, Elizabeth Bennett, is here. She's going to share ways to redirect your little furry friends for eating.
Well, turning now to a brand new puppy, folks. Nipping and biting is pretty normal behavior for puppies, but how do you teach them to chew this <laughs> and not my finger or my shoes? Oh, that's happened to me before. The puppy expert, Elizabeth Bennett from Believe in Dog Thanks. Trainings, is here with tips to help you handle all the biting. And we are joined by Tex Sedelfia, of course. I have Oreo. And then we have Theodore. This joining is Theodore, us. yes. And Stephanie, great to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you this so much. This is a very common issue. People get a puppy and it starts to bite. Yes, indeed. And so, you know, it is puppy biting, puppy nipping, but I do like to try to say puppy nipping only because when we say puppy biting, it almost, it's like an infer, like they're a trying to hurt you, right, but they're right. actually not. You know, it's a very natural, normal, it's a normal thing puppy to go behavior. Through. Absolutely. And almost always they will grow out of it as they mature, but it's absolutely necessary you see this they've got these puppy needle teeth and it's very very necessary they need it so it's absolutely not about trying to make them not do it it's about let's do something else okay well let's get started with some of the tips and what we need to do with our puppies when we're in sort of the nipping stage yes. what do we what do we start with obviously these little chewies yes so the oh yeah so we got always have a lot of different things for them to chew on first of all I want to make sure that my puppy is getting enough physical exercise and mental stimulation right so physical exercise is important little small increments of play, fetch, walkies, stuff like that to make sure that they're not just too, their body is not bored, right? right? They need that. And then of course, mental stimulation. I need many, many puzzles, training, nose work, all kinds of things like that. They've got to have their brain worked and their body worked just like us. And, and the things, oh, I was going to say, to be clear, these dogs all have owners. Yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. calling because I'm <laughs> going to tell you right now, Oreo, I might just put her in my pocket. Oh, she is a heartbreaker. Yeah. She's adorable. Yes. And some of the items uh, that you brought with you, Stephanie, these are things, when you say like problem solving, puzzles, are these some of those examples? Yes, yeah, see, there's some, these are some of my favorites. I've, these are all tried and true. And so there's a couple here that are food and puzzle. So they're chew, they're chew material, and they're also meant to be made into a puzzle. And so some of my favorites, so like a Kong, an original Kong is a very, very common one. You see, it's a, it's a material that they can chew on, but you stuff it and make it a puzzle also. Side, That's right? right, Cheerios, peanut butter, all kinds of stuff. This is a squirrel dude, he's the same kind of a thing only he's got little teeth in there so it makes it a little harder for it to get out this is a knobbly nubbly so these are chew and puzzle so I could actually put those in the crate with them because they're mature material also okay now some of these others are just brain just redirect my brain to do something else so they're not absolutely meant to be chewed on but they redirect their brain away from chewing on something so it's all about redirection don't chew this chew that or don't chew this do that do a puzzle here's a puzzle snuffle mat Ooh, Ooh, snuffle ball is our new favorite thing. It's really, really fun. What is that? It's just gonna roll around? Yeah, so you, we've made this. See, we've tied felt all around this ball that has little holes in it. Oh. And then we stuff treats in there. And then as they roll that around, little the treats, treats come, come out. Us. Yes, and this is a snuffle mat. It's a mat with the same idea. It's like nose work and grass. It's like foraging, nose work, that kind of stuff. They love it. They love it. And this is a bobble lot, which is also just to redirect um, getting their food in and redirect their brain. And then last but not least, we've got the choose only, right? Okay. So these are, I wouldn't like. They um, are busy. Yes, and <laughs> these are supervised kind of things, um, not to be left in the crate with them. Supervised. So Tex has his bully stick, which is his favorite, of course. It has quite an aroma. <laughs> it, <laughs> That one is particularly stinky today. Um, and then uh, Oreo and Theodore have these things called no hides. Now we've decided, um, we discovered that raw hides are not the best um, for them anymore because okay. they're not so natural and they're e not easily digestible. More plasticky, right? Yeah, so someone created these things called no hides. And what they are, they're like rice flour and different kind of ingredients, but they act and um, like no hides and they're, I mean raw hides, and they're actually very <laughs> good Yo, for them going to town. I love it. So these these are, so again, I can just sit right here instead of you chewing my fingers, yeah. then here, how about this? Just hold this and chew on that. Because they've got needle teeth. You see these baby needle oh, teeth? Yeah. And they, they are sharp. Now, they are. Is, just like our kids, you know, toddlers, our kids get overtired. Do puppies get overtired, oh overworked? God. Just exactly like a toddler, just exactly the same thing. So if they get overly stimulated, if they haven't had a nappy or a nap, and they just too much play, too much going on, you can tell it's just like a cranky toddler. So it's time to, that means, okay, let's have a little nappy. Let's have a little positive timeout. And when I say positive timeout, I mean, I'm not going to go, oh, I'm so mad at you. You go in here, anything like that. It's just, I love you very much, but you're a little cuckoo right now. So here's something to choose. 
shoe, you're going to go in your crate or your pen or something like that, just to have a little nappy time out. And very quickly, uh, Stephanie, if someone does, you know, like you, you're going to pick up your puppy, inevitably you're going to get nipped. Yes. If that does happen, how do you redirect the dog at that point? So if they do get you, so it's very important, they do get a lot of feedback, right? So almost naturally, if they get you, you're going to give them natural feedback. And so I do, you know, when they play with each other, they give each other natural feedback, which is good. They need that feedback to understand that hurts me. In the form of a bark or a yelp. Yes, and so out. I would do the same thing. I mean, you're actually probably going to do that no matter what. So they nip say, ouch. ouch! Right? And then the very second they stop, pretty dramatic ouch, you know, really dramatic. Mm -hmm. So that the second they go, oh gosh, sorry, you go, yay, good dog, thank you. Oh. So that then they start to learn, oh my God, these people are so sensitive. I better be careful with right. them. Watch yeah? right, chill. <laughs> Stephanie, always great information. Thank we you. appreciate these little snuggle <laughs> bugs today. And to connect with Stephanie, check out the scene thank on Houston you. Life section of our website. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Sorry, Oreo. <laughs> she is adorable. Come home with me. By the way, uh, while you are checking out our website online, don't forget to check out our Houston Life YouTube page. There you can find segment clips, behind the scenes videos, a whole lot more. You can subscribe by searching for Houston Life under the channel page. And we will be right back. Welcome back. Whether you're just starting out or simply need to eliminate stubborn problem areas, everyone's weight loss journey is truly different. And that's why Innovative Lasers of Houston offers a customized program. Joining me now to share her story is patient Catherine Armadaris along with Laura Alexis. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much for being here. Catherine, let me first start with you and, and tell us about your weight loss journey. What made you call Innovative Lasers of Houston to begin with? Um, basically, I wanted to make a change for myself and I have a nephew that I need to take care of and I didn't have the energy I needed so and now I have that energy. That is awesome and tell me about your weight loss because I have here that you've lost more than 40 pounds. Yes. That is awesome when you hear that so that also translates to about 16 inches in 16 sessions. Here's your before and after. Like, yes. look at that woman. That's unbelievable. Yes. How are you feeling today? Super awesome. Have you had problems with diets and trying to lose weight before? Yes. Tell me, tell me about that. Um, bad eating, bad eating habits. Um, Thanks to her, I have good eating habits. And that's just it, Laura. I mean, everybody's journey is different. When they come to you, you guys sit down with your clients and you map out what's, what's gonna be best for the client. I mean, you have that one-on-one -on -one capability. Right, right. It's, it's not a cookie cutter procedure. What works for her is not gonna work for her mother, for example, everybody's different. So based on the goals and target areas, we determine a plan specifically right for them. And let's just dive right into it because here's the clinic. This is what it looks like when you walk into Innovative Lasers. You're there, the staff is there. You go into the room where the lasers are. You start with sort of the overview of what the body is going on. So the weights, where you're holding on to fat, what might be water weight, but then you customize this plan. And once you get into the room, that's where the laser is. And this is what we're looking at. And you use the Zerona laser. Talk to us about this machine. Right, the Zerona laser is FDA approved and uh, it's phenomenal because it, you feel nothing at all. In fact, it's uh, no downtime, no swelling, no bruising, no pain, no heat, no cold. The patient feels nothing at all. Uh, two 20 minute treatments, patients can even come on their lunch break. And uh, we guarantee three to 11 inches in two weeks. So based on the number of pounds and number of inches a patient wants to lose, we'll determine what kind of plan to choose, you know, put them in. And again, each plan is different for each person. Right. Okay, so let's just get to the nitty gritty of it. How does it work? Could we see the machine, we see the people, we see the target areas. How does this work? So what you're seeing on screen is a microscopic image of the actual fat cell. So at zero minutes, the fat cell was plump. Undergoing the treatment, before a 20 minute session is done, the fat cell on the bottom, as you can see, has completely collapsed. And all you're left with is just that shell. So when that happens, you shrink. Very simple. <laughs> That's the magic from zero to about 18, 20 minutes is what is going on. And how, where does the fat go? It's excreted through bodily fluids such as urine and sweat. 
So one of the things that we advise our patients to do is drink plenty of water. Now there are a few do's and don'ts in order to um, optimize the results, but basically, bottom line, you really just lay there. The, pay, the, the machine does everything for you. And we're looking at some of the before and after pictures of some of your other clients, some you recognize who've been on Houston Life before to talk about their weight loss journey. And Catherine, while we're scrolling through these pictures of other clients, talk to us about being in that 20 minute session. I mean, was it painful? Did you feel anything? No. What did you do? It was not painful at all. It was um, very relaxing. So you sit there, that's just it. What I say, Laura, is that's that you're it. like, it's a spot treatment. Yeah. You can take a nap, you can listen to your phone, put your phone down, don't pay attention for 20 minutes, kind of decompress, which is so great. Let's talk about the special offer that you have for our viewers today. Well, the transformation package that we're offering typically is $2,400. So for viewers right now, it's half off. And if you're one of the first 100 callers, we're even going to throw in an additional three sessions for free. That is so great. So you see the information there on the screen. So that's six sessions for $1,200, and that includes those three sessions if you mention Houston Life by calling 281-888-3094. And uh, this is everything there on the screen that you see. Also, you can go to InnovativeLasersOfHouston.com. And again, Laura, you meet with all of these clients at your various locations to right. map out what's gonna be the best program for yeah. them. It's a free consultation, no obligation. Just give us a call. Um, if you uh, get the voicemail, just keep on calling or leave a, leave a message because we are honoring this special for the first 100 callers only. And there you go. There's also the locations there, Galleria, Spring, Clear Lake, Katy, and Sugarland. Catherine and Laura, always great to see you. Thanks so much for coming in, Catherine. We do appreciate it. Thank you. And keep it right here. The number again, 281-888-3094 to get in on the special offer. And you can also go online to schedule the free consultation of InnovativeLasersOfHouston.com. And after the break, signature cocktails to sip on during your next birthday celebration. We're saying cheers to Derek today. and gifts are great, but we all know that there isn't a birthday celebration without the cocktails. Our friend Robbie Schultz of Bear Creek Smokehouse is shaking things up with a fun birthday cocktail for your next celebration. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I Happy know. Birthday. Thanks, Robbie. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, too. And I mean, all of these delicious cocktails, how can I choose just one when there are four? You can't. That's why you have to have them all. Oh. I can't sense. believe this is, have you been sipping on them? We should have had one that at one least at the top of the show. Yeah. But Carlos would have knocked it over. Okay, <laughs> let's get started. Could you believe right, that? Right, it's a toss-up. Yeah, so the first one is a birthday cake martini Ooh. that we're going to make. And um, actually, Carlos should get in on this, but I'm afraid I, he would spill it. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> so Break the go. glass. You what? sip, we're going to make it. No, no, you go. It's your really? birthday. Yeah. yeah, it's your birthday. Oh, no one likes so, to drink alone, uh, though. With the birthday boy in mind, what we're going to do, we're going to take a martini glass. Okay, what are you dipping it in? That is honey, honey. <gasps> oh, yeah. honey. And, then and we're going to turn around and we're going to dip it in sprinkles. Okay. I'm going to have that sitting right there on standby. Now, um, it's mm. going to have a little bit of whipped vodka in there. Let's okay. see, two ounces. What's kinda, whipped vodka mean? Well, it's, mean? it's a kind of a whipped cream flavor. Oh. Um, I'm going to set this right here. Oh, it sure then is. we've got a little amaretta, ounce and a half okay. of amaretta. Holy cow, that's delicious. Are you feeling like it's your birthday yet? It's uh, Yeah, totally. It's <laughs> almost like dangerously <laughs> okay. delicious. Thank you is so much. Is this Godiva? Is that the Godiva? Yeah, this liqueur? is the Godiva. You know, we've used that in something else before. I think so. Um, and this now stuff I bought it is too. pretty awesome. And then just a little bit of half and half, two ounces. Okay. All righty, here we go. This gives it a really rich, creamy. No wonder it's so oh, creamy. Yeah. You know what they say about drinking you your betcha. calories? That's what? that's great. The it's good to way, do. Right? Okay, it I'm going to yeah, grab a little bit Who says that? Me. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Who Honey, needs are cake? you ready for a little? I am. Okay. Who needs cake when you can have a martini that there tastes like go. a cake? Dude, that is so good. You love it? I love it. Okay. Here we go. I do. Okay. Birthday cake flavor? Yeah, and you know what's, I, I think that sometimes these creamy martini drinks, they get a bad rap, kind of, but yeah. I think they're delicious. It's okay to splurge once in a while. I do, and it looks so cute. Maybe not every Cheers. day for breakfast, but for your birthday. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. not good? I couldn't figure out how to put a candle on it. I would have done it. Okay, so the next um, drink with so birthdays in mind is a German chocolate cake. So what we're going to do first, this has... A little bit of double chocolate vodka. We got okay. two ounces of that. This has a lot of stuff in it, so bear with me. I want to go to um, your test kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get anything done. In I there. bet. I bet. 
two okay. ounces of, uh, this is coconut vodka. Okay. Thank you What's for this passing. One? Of course. Okay. And then this is caramel, a half ounce of caramel vodka. Okay. You don't oh. mind if I go over a little bit, do you? Oh, no, never. Okay. Never. <laughs> and then this go. is um, coconut milk. Coconut milk. Yep. We got two ounces of that. We're going to put that right in there. And do we need the almond milk too? We will, yeah. If okay. you'll get, grab the almond milk, I'm going to. I'm trying to it's work fast. <laughs> That's a jug of it, right? Okay. Well, it didn't come with a straw, oh, the, okay? <laughs> that is Sorry awesome. Sorry about that. These are so cute. I guess I didn't even see that on the end there. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're going to put that there. That I've got to so shake good. this up. Pardon my hands. Put that in there. Okay, we're, we're going to give shake it a quick it. shake. Yeah. And this actually makes two right here. Okay. I'm gonna pour these up. Do you and love you know, it? I love it. I think the difference between like a really great cocktail and an average one, a great cocktail does take a little bit of time and thought. And right. it does, it takes a minute yeah, to put yeah. Together. you betcha. So this is chocolate almond milk. We're gonna do that. Ooh, Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh. Mm. That with a little bit of toasted coconut. Oh, and there we go, wow. baby. Wow, okay. Yeah, you're fixing to have a mustache, I too. am, too. Okay. Nice to you. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first. No, I'm just kidding. You can't avoid <laughs> <laughs> I'm, what, okay. whatever do you mean? <laughs> so the that next. went to a, <laughs> let's just move on. Let's do. <laughs> okay, so the next drink, we're calling it the Derek. You know, Derek is an Aries, so he's kind of yeah. like vodka. He's the life of the party. Mm -hmm. I can tell he has fun. Every you are like goes. vodka. Yeah. I mean, so kind of, yeah. Who doesn't oh, want good. Derek? I mean, if Derek and vodka don't show up at a party, is it really a party? It's not. I know, right? Mm -hmm. So this. here we go. Here goes the Derek. This is an Aries drink. So <laughs> let me get my little measuring thing. Here okay, we've so got an ounce and a half. Citrus That's vodka? Citrus. Okay. Betcha. Here we go. And tell me how you pronounce that. Cointreau. Okay. Wait, how do you pronounce it, Robbie? You don't want to know, know my human <laughs> pronunciation. You've got to tell us now. How do you pronounce it? Uh, Contro. Contro? Yeah, yeah, something like that. They'll know, they'll know what it is. They'll, yeah, they'll figure it out. Fine. They'll figure it out. Okay, I now i got to have a... At least you didn't say corn true, because I heard that one before. Corn true? That's a good coin. one. I'm trying to think of what Derek coin helped true. me. Coin true. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't even, what does that mean? What is that song right now? Instead of LaCroix, he calls it like... Lee Croy. <laughs> Lee Croy? <laughs> Who is it? Post Malone. Post Malone. Okay. We had to rhyme. It's all about the rapping. Shake, okay. Did you like the Derek? The, the Derek is delicious. It's, is yeah. it very, it's kind of like a Cosmo. Classic maybe, Cosmo. Never right? Yeah. Okay. It's very Cosmo-ish. Yeah. The Cosmo really became a thing like when Sex and the City started airing, right? Totally. And everyone I believe that's order the Cosmo. And then it sort of went out of fashion, but I think it's a classic. I love the, a good Cosmo. There you go, mm -hmm. Okay. Cheers, cheers. Oh, what are you perfect. thinking on that? Mm hmm I mean, it's great until some drunk girl comes and knocks it out of your hand. <laughs> well, I'm Martini. serious. I will get a martini in a regular glass so Never. I can avoid drunk people. Never. I love this. You but like a martini it? in a regular mm. glass ruins it. Yeah, you gotta I hear you. Yeah, glass. oh, you gotta have the real deal. My, yeah. Orlando always calls me a yeah. like a glass snob because <laughs> I don't. If it, yeah, it has to be in a martini glass. Yeah, huh. mm -hmm. that's very good. Differ. Makes you feel special. Right? It does. Yeah. I don't know. You feel more fancy. Okay, so the last drink we've got here, and we've got them already made up. This is called an Apple Fools. Oh. Instead of April yeah. Fools, it's called an Apple Fools. So this has some pretty cool stuff in it. Let me give you this. Okay. There you go. I can't believe you did four cocktails today. I know, I right? I so yeah. honored. So what's in this one? We're whipping it out. Okay, so let me just go through here. It's got simple syrup, and I took basil leaves and mulled them in the bottom of a shaker. That's what I taste, the mm -hmm. basil. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of just a good. little. good. Yeah, it's different. Okay, so then I've got tequila in there. We've got, um, now, who knows what green chartreuse is? That, that is in there. It's a liqueur that's made in France, and it was actually, the recipe is derived, some monks wrote the recipe down like in the 1600s. Oh, wow. And still manufactured in France. But so it's got green chartreuse, it's got grapefruit juice, and lime juice in it. I love it. Robbie, so a lot of great fruity flavors. You are fantastic. Thank you so much Thank for coming so in and playing bartender today. Thank you for today. having me. We Cheers. appreciate it. Cheers to you. And uh, make sure you check out the food section of our website to get all these cocktail recipes for your next party. We'll be right back. Cheers. Happy April Fool's, Robbie. Happy Seriously, birthday. That was so nice. That's so nice. Good, good. cocktails. How can we choose your well, thanks so much for joining us today. Happy birthday. Thank you so much, and thanks for the lovely gifts, including these 
denim panties. Those um, are amazing. And I'm worried that our producer, Carlos, is still recovering from that very graceful fall earlier. Bringing I, in the cake. I knew that something was up when he came out with that little cake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look how far that is. He is a trooper. He is he a is trooper. He is such a trooper. And, uh, <laughs> and I have to say, these are a perfect fit. They guys. are. Turn around. Let's it's see. Perfect Turn fit. it. Turn around. Yes. Shake it.